Good evening, class. We come to you uh, on this Super Bowl evening during halftime, and uh, this is February the 8th, 2021. And uh, uh, this today's class is Lesson 10, and it's coming from Revelation, the book of Revelation, uh, chapter 1, verses 10 through 13, 17 through 18, chapter 5, verse 1 through Five, and then verse 11 and 12. <clears throat> the memory verse for today is the revelation from Jesus Christ. It's John 1, or Revelation 1, 1. The revelation from Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take place. So this is a revelation of Jesus Christ, our Lord, and, and it's about the end times. You know, what soon must be to take place, you know, uh, to God, time has um, no bearing on God. He's eternal. But uh, so we've been in the last days for the last 2,000 years. And so as far as John was concerned, it didn't look like it would it look imminent, the, the things that would come to pass. Anyway, uh, last week we touched on in le re uh, lesson nine was Apostle Paul talking about the spiritual armor to fight a battle, and how many knows we're in a battle. But Apostle Paul, when he wrote Ephesians, he wrote other letters. Um, he was in prison for a lot of them, and uh, when he was in prison, he had time to write, and and they talk about an ambassador in bonds and chains and and some believe that he was actually chained to a Roman soldier so you know if, if he was chained to one then he would have intimate knowledge of the armor that the Roman soldiers wore um, to protect themselves in battle and so when he talks about being strong in the Lord and the power of his might put on the whole armor of God and we, we went over those things about each piece of the armor, and he related it to the spiritual. But the thing of it is, is John was also persecuted. He wasn't killed necessarily for his faith, but he was heavily persecuted. He could have died with the things that they did to him. I heard uh, history has it that he was boiled in oil, and he was uh, exiled on the Isle of Patmos. And so when they were in exile, I don't know if anybody's watched Survivor on here, but um, you don't have the provisions that you have in, in, in the normal society. So um, it's, it was tougher to live on in exile. <clears throat> anyway, he spent a lot of time alone, just him and God. And he was caught up in the spirit. And on the Lord's Day, he says, uh, in verse 10, which we're going to start for there, we'll read verse 10 to 13. And uh, the title of this message is Facing the Future. Facing the Future. And verse 10 says, <clears throat> I was in the Spirit, and this is from the King James, on the Lord's Day, and I heard behind me a great voice as of <clears throat> a voice of a trumpet. So that's pretty loud. Verse 11 says, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, <clears throat> unto Ephesus and unto Samaria, Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, to Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. <clears throat> Verse 12 says, I turned to see the voice uh, that spake with me. And and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst, in the middle of the seven golden candlesticks, was one likened to the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girded about the paths with a golden girdle. And um, skipping on down to verse 17, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying, unto me fear not i am the first and the last i am he that liveth and was dead 
and, uh, and behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death. <clears throat> right here is the essence of the gospel. The fact that our savior rose from the dead 2000 years ago and he is alive and he made an appearance to John uh, in 8095. 8095 was some 62 years after <clears throat> after Christ's uh, uh, death and resurrection. So um, I'm going to read out of this uh, lesson. It says, Apostle John contributed five books to the New Testament canon, which include the Gospel of John, the first and second and third letters of John, and the book of Revelation. He is also known as Jesus' beloved disciple, both because of his persistent emphasis on Christian love and because of his references to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. And it gives the reference scriptures for that. It's uh, John 13, 23, 19, 26, 20, verse 2, 21, verse 7, and uh, verse 20 of that same chapter, if you want to look at those references. It says, in addition, John was one of the, the one in whose care Jesus left his mother, Mary, while Jesus was dying on the cross. Woman, behold thy son, behold thy mother. You find that in, in John 19, 26 and 27, if you want to look it up. John remained in Judea perhaps until the death of Mary and then moved to Ephesus where he was well-loved. He was a well-loved church leader. He survived the terrible persecutions against the Christians while Jesus, uh, uh, after Jesus' death, and probably lived far longer than the other apostles. Nevertheless, toward the end of his life, he was forced to live on the island of Patmos, where he wrote the book of Revelation around AD 95. So, you know, in relation, here John is exiled and he's writing. Uh, Paul was uh, in prison and he wrote. Um, so, so situations change in our life, just like with the quarantine, just like we're doing digital uh, broadcasts, as well as, you know, we, uh, it, a lot of times was in place of the services. Now we're doing it in addition to the services um, because the situation has changed with the self-quarantining and everything. The battle plan uh, changes sometimes, not the, the gospel. But sometimes you have to make adjustments according to the situation. So we live in a digital age. We're creating digital content for people to reference long after uh, or after we're gone. We never know, you know, and uh, I, I don't believe it's all going to be scrubbed, but it could be. But at least we're putting the content out so that so that you will be able so someone will be able to hear the gospel when the church is raptured. Um, I think we're a whole lot closer we're, uh, than we were uh, just a few years ago. And seeing how things quickly change, uh, the rapture could be any moment. It could be any moment. Uh, so, you know, as things are lining up, I look uh, personally, uh, we look forward to every fall season as, you know, the possible, possible time for a rapture so, of the church. So not that he couldn't come at any other time. It's just it's heightened awareness that, uh, around the time of Feast of Trumpets that we should be looking up. And so we should be all the time, but I'm saying even more so. And as you see the day approaching, we should try to take advantage of these times of worship and get the gospel out to as many people, lost people as we can. Anyway, it says Christian tradition has firmly supported the view that Apostle John was the author of Revelation. Internal evidence within the book also seems to point to John as the writer, for the author identifies himself. Okay, all right, well, we read that. In addition, uh, his knowledge of Jewish scripture. Okay, uh, okay, uh, Revelation 1 and 1, verse 4, verse 9, and Revelation 22 and 8. In addition, his knowledge of Jewish scripture and high prestige among the churches of Asia Minor further strengthen this view. Um, 
Anyway, we're, we're definitely living in the last days. We're living in uh, the time of the end. Um, there, some of the things that uh, Apostle John described uh, may have been some of the modern weaponry that we see today, and he described it in the best imagery that he could. Um, so we're going to skip on down. We read already read the first two passages that they gave us for the Sunday school lessons. We'll skip on to chapter five, and uh, we're supposed to be reading uh, verses one through five and uh, uh, eleven and twelve. And I saw verse one in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the back side sealed with seven seals and I saw verse 2 says I saw a strong angel proclaiming the voice with a loud voice who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof and no man in heaven nor in earth neither under the earth was able to open the book neither to look thereon and I wept much, this is John, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the, set, the seven seals thereof. Verse 11 says, And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many angels round about the throne and the beast and the elders and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. That's a big number saying with a loud voice, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. We're going to be praising him throughout eternity. That's, 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 and our job on earth is to glorify our Savior. Because he said, I am the way, the truth, and life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He said, I am the door. If any man enters in, he's the only way. He's the door. He is it. He is the way that God provided all the way back to Genesis. The way was always Christ. We look back to the cross. They looked forward to the cross. They might not have always known it would be a cross, but they knew there was something better than the bloody sacrifices that they were sacrificing. Man tried to do it their own way. It started all the way back with Cain. They offered, Cain offered vegetables. God required blood because he, he showed that to Adam and Eve when he clothed them in skin. The, that, that it was a blood sacrifice. And, and I believe that Christ, our Lord, pre-incarnate, literally gave them an object lesson. He showed them how to take animals apart. So um, anytime you see an animal being eaten, it is a sign of the change that happened when man sinned. Our sin is a reminder of our sin and our need for a savior our sin and our need for a savior. Um, when man was created, we were not created to eat meat. That came later after sin. That came after sin. In fact, uh, it, I believe when you look at the ark and they talk about seven clean animals and seven, un they were already eating meat before we have the pre after flood uh, uh, instructions from God that they could eat and they, they, they could eat everything, including swine and everything else. The, the, the forbidding, that was just for the Israelites. And, uh, you know, when we, we read in Acts, when it says, rise, Peter, kill and eat, uh, I think it was deeper than just, just the spiritual thing that was going on there, uh, that he was to go to the Gentiles, those that they considered unclean. Because we had the same, this same Christ saying, anything that goes in the mouth, it's not what comes in the mouth that defiles, but what goes out. And, and, it, and what comes in, it goes through your digestive system and comes out when you go to the bathroom. And Jesus made it very clear. So uh, 
they might not have fully understood it, but we as non-Jewish people, we, we, too, we do understand it. And uh, we have a God who has provided for us in many, in many levels. And um, yeah, if a person wants to be uh, a strict vegetarian, I'm not against that. I mean, that's what, but you have to make precautions because there's things that we need in our body you have to supplement or whatever. But uh, enough about food. I just want to show the fact that, that death uh, is because of us. Is because he allows sinners to exist. And so um, when you look in a scripture and you see that Christ, uh, after his resurrection, he's cooking fish, he's eating fish. See, they never did that before sin entered into the world. And we're, wherever we, we we're, apparently we're going to have a reminder of our sinfulness and the fact that we have a Savior who died on the cross. So it's, it's deeper than just the eating meat, just like uh, the relationship between the husband and the wife and Christ in the church. These are mysteries, but uh, that we, we are to look for Christ in, in things. And um, it, especially when the Word of God makes these correlations, the simplicity of the gospel, we should look for the simplicity of gospel to get it across to people that look, we need a savior. And this is, this is just another reminder that we needed a savior and to God be the glory because he, only God can provide uh, a lamb for the sacrifice. Only he can provide that. And so we, we should be grateful to be ambassadors for Christ. We are representatives of heaven. This is not our home. And, uh, you know, everything has got to wrap up sometime, some way. God is using, I believe he's using the pandemic, using all the, the crazy things you're, to, to bring about the things that you're going to read in, in, that you read in the book of Revelation. Um, it, it's hard to imagine that uh, we could create famine, but we do. We, people can make terrible decisions and cause people to go hungry. Um, these, some of these things, God has chosen to use evil leaders and evil rulers to help bring things about uh, to a close. Because God, ultimately, he, he's in charge. And he's never going to be made a liar. His word will be fulfilled. Scripture will be fulfilled. So we must uh, accept it, brace ourselves for disappointments. But our disappointment is because, uh, because we have other expectations other than our heavenly home. So as long as our, our focus and our, uh, we don't get to, too caught up and entangled in affairs of this life, then there's less disappointment because the fact that this is not my hope. My hope is in the Lord. It's in heaven. It's in eternity. So I have an eternal hope. So no matter what happens in this life, my eggs are not in this basket. My eggs is in the, in the eternal basket. It's in heaven. So, yes, we have a future, but it's not here. This ain't, this not, hence, this is not the kingdom. The kingdom is the future to come. We have a future. Everything, if you don't know the Lord, this is, this is as good as it gets. But if you do know the Lord, then he said, he that liveth and believeth in me, Jesus said, will never die. How could he say that? We all die. It's a point that man wants to die after this judgment. No, we have eternal life today. We have a hope that the world doesn't have in the midst of whatever's going on. And people will ask you, they will want to ask you, why do you have a hope? Why do you? And it's because we walk by faith, not by sight. We're not living by sight. We are living uh, by faith, knowing that just as when he appears, we're going to be just like him, for we shall see him as he is. There's a rapture coming. It's coming. And the church is going out. And one day, every, every righteous person, whether they make it through the rapture or not, Every righteous person will have a new body and it will be an eternal body and it will be a glorified body just like Jesus' body.
Praise God. To God be the glory. God bless you. Let's end with prayer. Father, we thank you for this time we had a chance to have class. And Lord, I pray that you bless everyone that under the sound of my voice has had a chance uh, to watch this. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you.